Hello, most valued viewer. Nice to see you again. And um, I am back with an update about Synth VR. Um, it's been about a week and a half, so some work has been done. Uh, quite some pro good uh, progress, I think, and I'm quite happy with the results. So in short, what's new is we have a test module set, which is now implemented and ready. Um, and I call that the kind of the lab set. And this is the, the set of modules that are there to um, be able to test out some of the other functionalities uh, going forward into development. And um, that set has an oscillator, a main output, a clock, a sequencer, um, an envelope generator, an amplifier, and a signal splitter. So it's quite a few things. And um, other than that, a couple of uh, graphic updates coming up but I don't want to I don't want to waste too much time um, talking about it when I can demo it so um, I'm just gonna you know put on the quest and um, give you guys a look at what's been going on so here we are we are back in VR this is Civ VR and we have a bunch of different things to look at uh, we see a bunch of new modules and one of them um, has a nice little faceplate on it as well um, so this is uh, something that I've started working on just now. So let's just go through what these modules can do. And then after that, let's do a quick jam and see if we can play some, um, some actual music out of here, which is um, very exciting and uh, possible at this point in time. So what we have here, I'm just going to move back and teleport a little bit. What we have here is um, a main output, obviously not a label yet, but uh, whatever goes in here, uh, is heard out of synth VR. So if I pull an oscillator in here, there we go. It is, um, you can hear it from there. But um, the next module here is no more interesting. This is a main clock. And this uh, actually emits a kind of square wave signal, a pulse that can be used to drive other rhythmic things in, um, in the air. And uh, it's got um, a tempo knob. There we go. Not super interesting, but in a, in a second you'll see what's cool about that. You can also modulate its uh, speed using, for example, an oscillator. So that's a way that you can modulate the tempo of the clock. All right. Next up here, this is a signal splitter. So I can Take the clock, for example, I can put it in the splitter input, and out of the output, I get one copy of the signal, and out of the next one, I get another copy of the signal. So now I can, for example, put it into both of my outputs if I want to. So that's the way that you can split signals. So output, clock, signal splitter. Now, up here we have some interesting things. This one you've seen before, this is the oscillator. Let me just show you again. Got a frequency dial, and we got a control voltage input. I'm not sure if that should be called control voltage, really, but um, we'll figure that out. And you know, I can plug in uh, another oscillator's output into the um, CV input. There we go. So they can influence each other. Great. Now, a couple of other things that I have here. Let me just move a little bit. Um, here is a sequencer, and this is cool because if you take a clock output and you connect that to the sequencer's clock input, you can see it's starting to dry out the sequencer. You see the lights are moving here, and this sequencer is tapping into the audio engine to get values um, about where it is at the current step and things like that. And um, if I uh, take this output, this is the, the gate output from the sequencer, I can hear that these are being um, triggered. And I can enable and disable certain steps. I can multiply the clock with this with this dial here. Make it slower. Alright. And the reason we're hearing two short little bursts is because it's got a gate length. So it's, it opens the gate and it closes the gate at some point afterwards. 
we'll see that in a second why that's fun. So we can drive a sequencer this way. Good stuff. What else can we do? Well, these styles correspond to pitch. So let me just let me pull this oscillator into the output again. Do you remember we we did this before? The um, frequency modulation. Let's now take the pitch output from um, the sequencer. And feed that in there. All right. So we have some sequencing going on. Obviously, this is not great because this is not in musical scales yet, but it will be at some point. But for all intents and purposes, we are now like working with an actual sequencer, which is fun. And uh, we can make different um, gate lengths. You can see it makes the little light um, light up for longer. And um, what we can do is we can actually take this now frequency modulator oscillator. Let's plug it into the amplifier. Okay, amplifier goes into the output. Amplifier, you know, yes, we can adjust the volume of something. But that's not so interesting, but the interesting part is we can use control voltage to adjust the volume as well. So let's take the trigger output from the sequencer and feed that into the amplifier here. Okay, so that's something new, right? And we can adjust the gate length. All right, but um, that's just like an on-off kind of thing. So let's try and make it a little more interesting. Let's take this trigger signal and feed it into the envelope generator. This is attack, decay, sustain, release. Again, this will all become clear at some point in time. And the envelope generator will, will kind of generate this, um, this signal that can be used to control the voltage or something else, where it follows this kind of envelope uh, where when it's triggered, it's got an attack time and then some decay time goes to sustain level. And then once you, um, the note comes off, it has some release time. And you can see that uh, reflected in the light here. And I can also drag it into the amplifier. Okay, that's something. So I can adjust the attack. For example, sustain. Okay, or long decay and some release. Okay, interesting. The envelope generator has inputs too. So what if I took another oscillator and I took the output and I fed that into one of my parameters here? So now I'm starting to make some things happen, you know? So maybe interesting things, I don't know. We can also plug it somewhere else. Cool. All right. So here's a little thing that we have going now. Okay. But, you know, that's fine. That's fine. But I want to also use this clock here to drive this sequencer. How do I do that? I can't, I can't just put this one up here. That would, well, that will work, but not really, right? So I need, to, I need to split the signal somehow. And that's what the signal splitter is for. So let me take this, feed it into the signal splitter, and I plug my oscillator back in. Good, all right. Then we take this now and then I can split it and, and, and put it up here. Cool, so my second sequence is running. And maybe I can, um, you know, I can work on a little rhythm here. Let me, um, let me use the pitch output and send that into this oscillator here. Actually, let me send it into this oscillator. Take this output, send it to an amplifier and pull that into my output here. 
Okay. Okay, so something's happening.
So you know, music is starting to come out of this. Yeah, whatever we want really. Let me just try and switch it up a little bit. Oops. And there, I accidentally pulled one of the modules. You can see when you pull a module, it'll disconnect. But you know, that's, that's like a quick demo of the different modules that we have and a bit of a jam session um, using the clock as an output here to, you know, trigger, um, trigger a, a, a sequencer or using a splitter to trigger several things at once. And you know, it's all possible. So super interesting and super fun. Um, can't wait to kind of, kind of keep building on this. Yeah, so that's basically it. I now have VR face and uh, that's because I had a lot of fun. So that's uh, always good. Um, so what we have now is like um, a working implementation of the lab module set, the test module set. And um, what's uh, next for Synth VR is faceplates. You saw it on the oscillator. We're trying to work out how to um, do dynamic face plates for all the different modules and do them in such a way that at some point um, this becomes extensible so extendable so that you can um, make your own face plates and apply them um, in runtime to these uh, different modules and um, after that it will be all about rack building so that's about figuring out how all these modules go together in a structured rack and um, how you can then uh, save and load racks like that. So I'm sure that'll be super interesting and exciting. Um, for now, I'm going to take one step at a time. I'm going to keep working on some of the visual aspects and some optimization aspects. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be at the kind of um, base functionality uh, for Synth VR uh, quite soon. Until then, I wish you a good day and uh, I hope to see you again around here sometime soon.